What's up guys, welcome back to another coding video. In today's video, we're going to be learning about how to add a table like this to your website. So we're gonna just aim for some simple columns here, um, you know, some random data, and make sure to add the borders and kind of center it in the website so it looks nice. So let's get right into it. All right guys, so here's our blank web page, and obviously if I reload, there's literally nothing on here. It's a new file. So let's go into the file here and initiate our HTML session and the body. And then we're basically already there. This is a super simple setup. So I want the table centered. So let's do the center tag and just add some um, lines here to add some spacing. And then right here is where we're gonna have our table. So to initiate a table, just obviously say table. And you can, the cool thing is this is just like any other HTML object, so you can, you know, ID it and call it whatever you want, table one, or uh, name it as well, and also call it table one. There, there's a bunch of stuff in here, obviously style and other parameters, but we're not gonna be really using that too much today. So for the actual design of the table, we'll focus on that in a bit, and that's gonna go up here. Or if you already have an external CSS file, then go ahead and import that in the header. But for now, let's just focus on what makes a table so first you're going to want a row and that the row can either hold the headers or the data so obviously to fill any table with any data at all you're going to need some rows and to do that we do this and then type in tr and then close it and that will automatically add a new table row so in this first row this is this is where we're at right now so here's our table and we just started, and here's our, we just created our first row. We just created this, but there's nothing in here. So we want to create these headers, ID, fruit name, and color. So to do that, to have headers for the table, you do this, and then TH. And this is going to be what makes up each header. So let's just copy this three times, or sorry, two, two more times, to make three total headers. And then um, do ID and then fruit name and then color okay so let's save that here and just see what we have so far so obviously it's this is extremely boring and the average user wouldn't be able to see that this is a table they would just look at this and be like oh that's some random data i don't like that at all but let's uh let's go ahead and fix that so if we go back into the back end here um, to fix that you actually need another couple of rows so every row after you initialize your headers, which we did right here, obviously, is that's going to be filled with the data. So right here, you just do another row, and then each row after this will be filled with data. So if we have 40 rows, then we're going to have 40 rows of what's going to be right here. So to initialize data, you do the uh, less than sign and then TD and then close it and that's your data so whatever's inside of these this right here can be your data an important thing to note you need as many of these table data markers as you have headers so if you have three headers you're obviously going to need three sets of data to put into that so that the table is nice and even and I'll show you what I mean so if I only have two right here and let's just say for this I have the ID is one and then my fruit name is a watermelon but you know maybe I forget something and I think that I'm done if I go ahead and click save and then reload you'll notice only these two columns are open so what I mean is you have to have three sets of data for every three headers or however many headers you have so to do that and to make sure it's nice and even let's just even it out and then the color of a watermelon is obviously green so let's refresh that, and now we have our first row of the table. So to finish it off, let's go ahead and just copy this a few more times and add a few more rows to the table. And let's fix some of the spacing right here. So let's bring that in and these in as well. Okay, so let's just slowly increment our ID here all the way down. And you don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. I'm just I'm just using this as a plain example. So Let's go ahead and change the names of our fruit because obviously we don't have all um, fruits here. So if you go back to the table that we want to make, 
we obviously have a couple of fruits, so let's go back. And we're going to do apple. And apples are red. And then orange. And there's those. That's just self-explanatory, obviously. Um, and then finally, we're going to have a grape. And grapes are purple. So let's go ahead and save that. Refresh. And here we have a nice, decent table set up here. But you'll notice it kind of bothers you that there aren't any lines. It's nice to have lines so that each cell is kind of um, separated individually. So to do that, we're going to go back here. And like I said earlier, you can import your own style sheet if you want. But um, what I like to do is go up into the header and just um, we'll create the header, of course. And then we're going to call style. Okay, so we're inside of our style thing here, and obviously we just want to name what we need to style. So we need to style table, and table header, and table data. And you might ask why we are not doing row, and you'll see that it's actually taken care of by just naming these three things. So to do that, we type in table, we type in table header, and we type in table data, and open our brackets here. And we're just going to call two simple properties, so we're going to say border, colon, and then one pixel solid black, and that's just saying that you want a one pixel border um, with solid black coloring around it. And then we're also going to need border dash collapse and call collapse. And that's just going to let the, uh, instead of just being a border around the outside of the object, we're going to just have it um, throughout the entire, you know, each row, each thing with data. And you'll see what I mean. So if we go ahead and give it this a refresh, you'll notice there are lines around all of our stuff in the table. But that's not all. What if you actually want to use data that you imported from somewhere else, such as like you have an array in PHP or something that you want to display as table data? So let's go ahead and try something like that. So up here, we're going to just initialize our array. So let's call our PHP session. And you can use whatever page language you want. I'm just using PHP because I really like it, and it's simple. Okay, so inside my PHP session, um, now we have to declare an array. So let's do uh, data, and then uh, do the array tag with these quotes in there and semicolon. So let's just go ahead and, and fill up one row's worth of data. Or actually, no, let's do two. So we're going to need the ID and then... The uh, fruit name, which is uh, let's do watermelon again, and then the color green, and then let's do yeah. You know what? Let's just leave it at one row because it, it's just an easy proof of concept. All you need is a for loop. So let's go ahead and go to one of our rows, like the first one, and go ahead and delete it. And all you need to do is create a for loop. So for, and then do this. Open close brackets. So we're going to have uh, the index at 0. It's less than, actually, no, let's do for each because it's a little bit easier. Let's do for each, and then um, let's do the name of the array, and then do that. And then all you need to do is go ahead and echo. In s you're echoing the data to make up the row, basically. So you echo. And then you need your data tag, so TD and the ending TD, which they nicely put in here. And then you just call the variable name, which is value in this case. Give it some space. So this is going to go ahead. Once it names our headers, it's going to come down to the next row. Each thing inside this array, it will label as data inside the row. So if we save it and give it a refresh, oh, looks like we have a little bit of error here. So let's go back. Okay, so we have that here. And oh, I almost forgot. Let's go ahead and initialize our other PHP session down here so it actually realizes what it is. Save the changes. Go ahead and give this a quick refresh. And you'll notice the first row looks just the same as if we manually put the data in. All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or comment down below for any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. Um, as always, please subscribe to my channel for more content. And with that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.